We're talking markets with Tommy Grisafi from Advanced Trading, ATI Pro Media. Tommy, appreciate the uh, chance to talk markets. Certainly uh, a lot of things happening. Let's start with soybeans. This market's been on fire. What's what's happening here? All weather, Don. It's it's very much a soybean rally. It's not it's not moving the corn so much. It's not moving the wheat. Finally, Friday, uh, corn and wheat came along for the ride, but soybeans having a, a nice V bottom out of harvest lows, not only from a future standpoint, but from a basis standpoint. We go from where are we going to put all this crop to, hey, do you want to bring a couple loads in? As far as corn, I had a client in Iowa call this uh, morning, and he said corn he was supposed to deliver in March. They already asked for here in November. So interesting things happening in the cash market. All eyes on South American weather. Some parts are too wet. Some parts are too dry. So what's that mean as far as corn and wheat? You said there was a little pull-up uh, late last week. What do you see as we move into this week? Well, they, they're, they're doing a little better this morning. Corn's up a little, but now it's unchanged as we speak. Wheat's up a little. But the funds are really short corn and wheat, so it wouldn't surprise me to see those gently rally into the year end. Of course, we have a lot of uh, economic data that's hitting the market at all times. We, we have too much corn. That's the problem. The balance sheet on beans are a little tighter. I hear a lot of variability in beans across the United States. But when we come to corn and wheat, bottom line is no matter how much I'd like to be bullish or how much I'd love for clients to see the corn market explode, the word explode in corn don't get used real often. Uh, rallies will be sold. We'll be watching the cash market. People who bin corn, it's more of a cash play than a, uh, than a futures play so much because... The cost of storing that corn has changed, Don. The economics of storing a bushel of corn, wheat, and beans have changed a lot in the last year. I'm in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We have a tremendous amount of corn that is still standing with that uh, that uh, late October snow that came through. Guys are, are chugging through it, trying to, to get that crop out, but it's going to be a while before we, uh, we finish this crop in, in this region. What are you seeing across the rest of the Corn Belt? Yeah, spending this weekend here in northwest Indiana, surprised. I noticed a few soybean fields getting late for that. Uh, corn, lots of corn still out there. The last part of harvest is a long grind. A lot of folks in North Dakota, I noticed on Facebook and Snapchat and all those things, people saying they're finishing up. The Depending on where they are, there's several more weeks of corn to go uh, get out there. And that's a good thing, right? That would kind of give me the feeling that the bushels are there. Small crops get harvested quickly and put away. Uh, bigger crops take a while to harvest. And in parts of America, there's a lot of corn out there, Don. What are we seeing in the outside markets? What's happening in Wall Street? What's going on with crude and the dollar? We could spend a whole hour on that show. But long story short, the stock market, the Dow Jones, the S&P, uh, the NASDAQ, the Russell rallied 5 to 7% last week. We're seeing the VIX, the volatility index, and that come in tremendously. On the 10-year note, you and I love to talk about interest rates. Last week, we're talking about that the 10-year note hit 5%. And by Friday, we're talking that the 10-year note hit 4.55. On Friday at 7.30 in the morning, we had an economic data release. We released the non-farm payrolls. And I want to say that number went from like... Oh, call it 180 to 155 or 200 to 175. It came in 25,000 jobs less than expected. And it sounds weird to say on a recording or a show that, yes, America created less jobs and the markets rejoiced and exploded because what that's meaning is the actual actions, the Fed raising rates, the effect of that, which sometimes takes up to 12 to 18 months to kick in, has kicked in. Now, you'll hear the word tossed around soft landing the Fed's hoping they can uh, land this giant plane on this little ship. It's hard to do. Uh, we may find out they went too much. We may find out they didn't go enough. So when the Fed tightens rates, it, it doesn't just affect the market. It affects some things that day, but it also affects other things over time. And we're starting to see those effects kick in and work done. I'm curious, Tommy, if we see a moderation in interest rates, what happens to some of those big ticket purchases, homes, cars, those kind of things? If we could get that 10-year around four and a quarter, I think you'd see a nice little pop-up in homes. Of course, homes problem still done. It, it's conundrum is that there's not enough inventory out there. There's not enough homes at regardless of the interest rate. I will tell you personally, when I go for walks in my neighborhood, homes used to go for sale and be gone within days. And I've noticed homes on the market when I look at like Zillow. I see homes on the market for 60 plus days. You get into big ticket homes, whatever you consider big ticket uh, stuff in the in in the lower prices. Call something at like 250.
those still go within a few days. Days, But you get 500000 plus and it's staying on the market longer because the actual payment, which used to be a couple thousand dollars a month in a mortgage, has went up to like 3200 You talk a million plus type of home or commercial real estate, and you're talking a large amount of interest being uh, accumulated here to make a purchase like that. I like to pay attention to what's happening uh, in the capital city and with the farm bill in particular. Obviously, we had that uh, three-week lag with uh, the House trying to put together a, a speaker, and Mike Johnson came into that role looking at December for getting the farm bill wrapped up on the House side, uh, although now we're seeing David Scott, the ranking member of the House Ag Committee, saying we should have a one-year extension of this farm bill. He wants a bill done as soon as possible, but doesn't want something rushed just because of the... Uh, a uh, little bit of a chaos that came through on the other side of the aisle. Uh, we also heard Debbie Stabenow, the Senate Ag Committee Chair, also talking about a one-year extension. And Ag Secretary uh, Tom Vilsack last week was at the National FFA Convention, and he had that same message. We'll get a farm bill done, but we'll need to do an extension, and that will come before the end of the year. So that's kind of the lay of the land we're seeing with that process. No shortage news in Washington. Of course, we got to finish up with Israel, Gaza Strip, Ukraine, Russia, Still going on, still a lot of lives being lost, but uh, when you look at the stock market and you look at the overall, health, the overall health of the economy, America's moving forward even though there's bad things happening. I will finish with this. I think we are officially one year till the election, to the presidential yeah. election, maybe 364 days, something like that, maybe one year today. But uh, things will start moving a lot faster. We'll see candidates dropping out. We'll see a bunch of uh, cheap shots being taken. Of course, that's how the sausage is made, Don. Yeah, uh, we've got one of the presidential debates this week. Uh, let's have a supply-demand report this week, too, Tommy. No shortage of news. You and I could make this an hour show. We do have a USDA supply and uh, demand, and I imagine they're going to say that there's a, a fair amount of corn out there, and then maybe we have a little surprise in beans. It's a USDA number. Respect it. Respect both sides, both the upside and downside. Never know what's going to happen when they present their numbers, Don. Again, reminder, Tommy, how can folks get in touch with you? Yeah, give us a call, 1-800-664-4383. We ask that you subscribe to the Advanced Trading YouTube. Hit notifications because we're going to have a lot of uh, broadcasts like this moving forward. Good deal. Tommy Grisafi with us from Advanced Trading ATI Pro Media.